This is Rabbi Yehuda Levin, a Parshas Bahar Kaisai. I want to add some uh, different Torah that I said at the um, at the Oifruf of Chaim Grossman, which followed a week after the Oifruf of my nephew, uh, Mayor Dickstein. And I explained that I had once, years, uh, several years ago, explained with regard to Lag Ba'omer, that Lag Ba'omer, there's a great debate between the Poiskim uh, as to the uh, ability, as to the permission to, um, to burn uh, valuable clothing in the Madura Lekovet Rabbi Shim Bar Yochoi at Meron. This is a original minhag for hundreds of years. The Biyana Rebbe does it today. And the Chassam Seifer shrays Kukuriko, meaning he, he's very, very adamant in protesting this and holds his baltashkes. If I remember correctly, you have Yosef Shol Natanzen, the famous Shol Mesev, also weighs in on this. And so there are those, there's a rub from Tzfas, there are those who defend it. And I think, I think, I can't be 100% sure, and I don't want to be guilty of misappropriating someone else's Devar Torah, but as far as I can remember now, I was machadish as follows, that in the song we sing, in praise of Bar Yechoi, we say, Nase Odom Nemar Ba'avuroi, that, in other words, that uh, when Hashem consulted, so to speak, with the angels, and He said, let us create a man, He was talking about a perfect man, the kind of man that Rabbi Shem Bar Yechoi was. He was perfection. And perhaps I suggested that's why Rabbi Shem Bar Yechoi stood in a, in a, 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 a ma'ora in a cave with his son, Rabbi Elizabeth Rabbi Shimon. For 12 years they studied Torah. They were unclothed. They were inside pits, but they were unclothed. And they only put on the clothing when they prayed, when they davened to Hashem. Perhaps it was because they were in the Bechina of Adam Harish and Kaidam Achet, of Adam before he sinned, at which time, as we know, they were unclothed in Gan Eden and the Garden of Eden. And thus, when we burn clothing on Lag Ba'ayma, we are valuable clothing. They usually, as they show this year in a picture in the, in, in the pictorial session of one of the Haredi newspapers, that there was a valuable silk beged item of clothing that was uh, literally tied around the uh, madura, tied around the wood that was going to be lit by the Biana, Ainical of the Rishna. So the concept is, by doing this, we are showing that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechoi, whose yard site and birthday we celebrate on Lag Ba'ayma, was so great that he was like, Odom Harish and Koydom Echet, that he did not need clothing. And consequently, we celebrate that Madrega, that exalted level, and perhaps we express the hope that, that by being under the influence of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochoi, on his day, on his yard site, where his power is that much stronger, and by commemorating his life and his, his Torah and his Sisre Torah and connecting to him, as the Gemara says and the Swaram comment, Kidai Lismoich al Rabbi Shimon Bishas Hatchak, it is worthwhile to depend upon Rabbi Shimon. When someone is Bishas Hatchak, he is in hard pressed situation, meaning he's in trouble. So we hope that we should be able to emulate Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechoi. And we know also that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechoi said, to his son, if there's two people in the world that could hold up the whole world, it's me and you. So we express all of these thoughts, and we feel all these thoughts at the time of the lighting of the Madura, of the Beged, that it reminds us all of trying to return and hoping one day to return, certainly in the Messianic era, to return to the level of Mashiach, of uh, rather Adam Harisha and Kaidam Hachet. So I continued that I, I found this piece of Torah in a, a, a Likud of Divrei Torah having to do with Chasna and the Sefer, Korin of Yeshua Baal Tzadikim on Nisuin brings down from Rabbi Yehoshua Meketino 
Umeketuno brings down that the minhag that a kala sends her chosen a talis has to do with this same concept that the kala who is a daughter, a great granddaughter of Chava, the first Jewish woman, the first woman in the world rather, Ein Kol Chai, Chava caused Adam to sin and therefore he had to be clothed. Before that they were not clothed. She brought him down and herself as well from that exalted level. So the Kala now sends the Chosin a talus which in which to enwrap himself, which signifies her admission slash acquiescence slash confession that in fact she caused original sin. But the fact that the tzitzis, and I don't know if I'm saying this, I think I'm saying this, the fact that the talus has tzitzis on it, so it could be that she's also signaling that it's true I caused you to fall, you and mankind to fall to a level where they we, we all have to be cloaked. But the first item of clothing I'm giving you as a rectification is a talis mitsuyetzes, a talis with sitis that we know that there are cheshbonis, there are ways of reckoning the sitis strings and the knots that it should come out to the Tariyag, to the it represents the 613 mitzvahs, the Torah and mitzvahs, and it's Keneged Kol HaMitzvahs, the Tzitzis. And therefore, maybe she's signaling him that even though on the negative side I brought the world down, but now we have new vistas and new opportunities for Ruchnius to earn it, to earn our way back to Odom Harish and Kaidam Achet. And the concept of Lefiha Khirbulahem Toyu Mitzvah, Hashem Khovit Suman Sidka Yagdal Taraviyadi, this con this kind of a concept. As it says Basifun Shuravi Meya, it says Vine Toif Hamavis. That there's even something good with the sin of Odom Harish that it brought about Mavis, because ultimately that leads a a Jew through sweat equity to come back to the higher levels, and he has to go through all kinds of situations up until and including mothers, but ultimately he will attain that. And so it's an optimistic sort of thing that takes the chosen and kala through the ages, through the agency of the talis, back to a replication of Odom Harish and Koydem Hachet, meaning that just like by Har Sinai there was Poska Zuhamason, that means that the Zuhama of the Nochosh, of the sin that was injected into Chava by the Nochosh, according to the Zoya, this dissipated by Kabbalah's HaToyra, and man and woman were all without sin, like Odom, Harish, and Koydem Achet, until they sinned again with the eagle. Similarly, Bezeir Anpin in minuscule. Each and every chosen bakala, as we know, is moichlin loikola vaynoisav. There's a total mechila, and as we discussed in our last piece of Torah, loy bachola nilvalov. Not only for the chosen, and obviously also for the kala, but even for the entire retinue. So everybody experiences a new start, which means, albeit temporarily, they're in the bechina of paskas huamos and of adam rishon kodem so all of these things are included in that minig of sending the chosen, uh, the kala, sending the chosen tzitzis, the talis kotl. I want to say with this, we can understand the rectitude, the particular significance and beauty of the Sephardic minig, which is also done, I think, by the Yekis, that under the chuppah, the chosen makes a brocha on that talis, I'm not sure, I can't remember if he makes a Shechionu or just a Brocha. And then after enwrapping himself, he then puts the Kalas around his Kala and himself and wraps them both. And that is one of the ways in which he acquires, he makes a Kenyan of Yichud with the Kala. Now that we, we understand the inner meaning and some depth of why the Chosin receives a talis from the kala. It's so beautiful that he in return now returns the favor and he acquires her with this gift, so to speak, that he's just accepted from her. 
The gift is not merely the physical talus and the tzitzis, but far deeper than that, the gift is the signal of a joint effort that starts with the talus sending the chos and the talus and tzitzis, indicating that they are going to enwrap themselves and be enraptured and encloaked in, in the, the, the new beginning of starting off as Odom Chava Koydem Achet and taking the challenge and the inspiration and the job assignment of all Tariyak mitzvahs anew in the building of their house. So how appropriate this exchange, the chosin, the kale gives the chosin, the tzalas, and all that it represents, and then the chosin enwraps the kala as he acquires her. He acquires her, and he also forges a partnership with her of ish vi isha shechina shriya in total purity, at the mokim of the foot of the of the footstep of the of the uh, the the base of Har Sinai, because as the Tashbat says, all of the things that we do under the chuppah are replicas of what happened when God consecrated Klal Yisrael and gave them the Torah that Sarah said Dibris at Har Sinai. So. It only remains to include one more concept. I think that the Sefer Kolmini Yeshua Ba'olei Tzadikim brought it down from, if I'm correct, the Pirish Harosh Al Hachumish, if that's what the commentary was, that explains that in Devarim it says, Kiyikach Ish Isha, and juxtaposed with that, there's a posik about Gedilim Tasalacha, you should make yourself tzitzis on the talis. So we see that the source of the connection between tzitzis, talus, if you will, and marriage of Isha and Isha is by the very juxtaposition, the very proximity of these two psukim. Thus, this is a greater affirmation of the rectitude, of the correctness, and the beauty, and the depth of the chosin acquiring in, in part the kala and beginning his matrimonial, marital, yichud relationship by taking the gedilim taselecho and using it as a vehicle of kiyikach ish isha. This was my Torah um, for Chaim Grossman, this past Parshas Emor. And furthermore, for a further Devar Torah on chosen v'kala, and we'll have to come back for that for another piece of, of Torah, another recording. Pass down, pass this around, please. Thank you.